you know, even Chinese speaking, you can come. Okay, praise God, hallelujah. Okay, can you uh, show my PPT right now? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, thank God for this opportunity to come here. In the last year, actually, I come here to the first time of the preaching the English service. And this year, actually, I, uh, last time, actually, I have the, the uh, preaching in the Chinese services. So praise God. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to continue to partner together with your church. And uh, most importantly is that the God is really you know, present in this church. I see that the anointings, anointings is very, the unctions is very strong here. Hallelujah. And then most importantly, I see that your church really is a church to engage with the community. I, actually, uh, last time I stayed in the Abdulan. <laughs> so I said that I witnessed how you know gracious God is and through your church to you know extend to the help for those who are in need and I've even seen more you know like uh, homeschooling I think your church is really like my church a community Baptist church we really do a lot of the community work we provide in even senior citizen of the services we even have the Abdulam service you know in my church wow very similar praise God hallelujah Okay, can I see my uh, PPT now? Okay, then I have to tune it. But can I see my one tip out here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so as you see from here, even though this is written in Chinese character, it may, may, may not be understand, but you see that, you know, Always we see that the mother is on the top. Mothers are embracing a child, just nursing the child, which is uh, fantastic. But uh, what you cannot see, the invisible fatherhood at the bottom. You see the fatherhood? The father is one to hold the whole family. Can you say amen? amen? But mother, do you think the mother is very important? Also very important, you know. Uh, so praise God I've been here to doing the cross cultural missionary uh, I mean, journey here for more than 30 years already. So I admire, you know, you know I learned a lot of languages in, the, you know, in Malaysia, not only just English, Bahasa, also can speak, you know, in, the, in Cantonese and Mandarin, many of the dialects I can speak. So praise God. This is a nurture ground for the missionary. Hallelujah. So I pray that not just, you know, we as a Christian, not just, you know, confined to the four walls of the church, but we have to walk out of our community, walk out from our church, and engage with the community, engage those who are in need. Can you say a big amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so you can see that the fatherhood is very important. Motherhood is very important. Can we can ask that the father and mother can arise? Can you just arise, father and mother? If you are the father or mother, yeah, can we just begin, give them a big hand? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You are very important, you know, to the stability of the family. You know, uh, you know I've been away from my family because of, you know, the COVID-19. My children are all back to Taiwan to study. And uh, one of the, my daughter is going to a PwC as a chartered accountant. Praise God. And my son actually already married to an American white stay in Ohio over there so praise God so even though I'm pastor you know sometimes maybe financially it's quite tight but by the grace of God hallelujah God's grace is sufficient for my for me and for my family members hallelujah praise God okay so today allow me to share with you about the uh, very important a uh, very prominent of the a uh, woman is called in church history. I really appreciate the woman. Ordinary yet is a superficial woman. Okay, her name is called Susanna Wesley. Can I just find out from all of the, the crowd here? Uh, so the, about you know congregation. So have you any one of you heard about Susanna Wesley? Can I see your hands? Yes, some of you are already you know. So. Or maybe some of you are not aware of who is a Susanna, then you're better to sign up with Dongli Seminary. <laughs> I was going to share with you further. So anyway, Susanna Wesley is born in, nine, in 16, in 1669. And uh, he was, she was the daughter of a Samuel Annesley and Mary White, right? and the mother of John and Charles Wesley. 
Anybody know John and Charles Wesley? Can I see your hand? Yeah, you see many people need to attend uh, Donnie Seminary. <laughs> they are not aware. So who is the, uh, who is the John and Charles Wesley? You know, John, uh, uh, Actually, it's a Wesley John. John Wesley actually is a very important person, you know, in the UK. He lead the great revival there and even spread the revival even further to the United States. And Charles Wesley is the one who's really capable of writing the hymns. Wow. So as you study the, you know, the laws of the days, uh, now you will see a lot of the modern hymns. Now, actually, those of the days, you know, uh, Charles Wesley is the most important writer for the hymns. And then, uh, actually, uh, they lead the evangelical revival in Britain in 1730s. Wow. So, you see, uh, songwriting and also the preaching come together and bring the revival to the England. I think this is the same thing, not only just because of that, you know, but also not just bring revival to the church, but also spread to the community. Even you see that, I think it's a bit uh, echoes. So can you reduce the echo? Sorry, because I'm not singing. Later, I'm, when I'm singing, you can <laughs> give me the more of the echoes. Okay, so, uh, so uh, uh, Susanna Wesley was well known as an uh, intercessor under her apron. You know, the UK people is always aware of the apron. And then, why, why she was well known as an intercessor under her apron? Because she was a uh, uh, sharing with the children when mom was praying and with the cover of my apron you are not supposed to God tell me <laughs> understand that Malaysia will not God tell you <laughs> it's supposed not to God tell me because this is my holy holies when I put the apron over my head hallelujah can you imagine you know she is the one she is the one have the more than uh, 17 17 children, but some of them actually die after that because the lack of the, uh, the you know, medication or something happened to them. But anyway, with a, with a mother with more than 19 of the children, do you think you will be able to really to do your motherhood in such kind of manner? I don't think so, isn't it? Now you even have the one child, you're very, very hard to settle already. How much more, you know, have the 19 children? Wow. So, you know, she is the one even have the 19 children at the time. Now, you know, you see that she will be able to find her holy holies. You know, prayer, the apron over the head is a holy of holies. Hallelujah. So, I wonder how many of you have the holy of holies in your home, in your workplace, in any with the money. Money is very important. But more than that, fatherhood continue to, like uh, right now, you know, my family, even though we are, you know, my family will be in the United States, in Taiwan, in Malaysia here, but actually it's just uh, roughly around two to three weeks we are going to have the online of Zoom meeting. We are going to update one another what's happening right now and pray for one another through the room. Hallelujah. Even right now, you know, praise God. Hallelujah. Can you just uh, uh, give God a, a, big, a, a big hand? And then God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And God actually is in the midst of the, your difficulties, the challenges. Hallelujah. 
Because, you know, we are in different places. We may encounter something unexpected, but God is greater than the difficulties. Amen. Hallelujah. And God of Susanna of Wesley, God of Susanna Wesley is the same as God of us. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to touch on the topic as follows. Experiencing the power of God in prayer. And seven prayer lessons to learn from the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 21. So, you know, you know, I come from the Baptist background. You know, we really have the exegesis of the preaching. So this is what we have learned. Not only just the charismatic ways of preaching, we are both, praise God. So today I'm going to touch on three parts. The first part, can we just say it together? We pray to a great God. And the second part is called, we declare God's greatness. Third, we experience God's great power. So bear in mind, this is a very important outline for today. And we are going to experience the power of God in the preaching. And also afterwards, as I minister to all of you, hallelujah, praise God. So the part one, we pray to the great God, is come from the, the uh, Acts of chapter uh, Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 23 to 28. In the uh, Acts 4, is uh, on their release. You know, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. So prayer lesson one. Can we just say that together? Prayer number lesson, prayer lesson number one. <laughs> It was a prayer that was born out of witness and service for the Lord, which is very important. You know, sometimes, you know, we get uh, disconnected with the church when we become unchurched. And, you know, we become wanderer outside, you know. So if you become a wanderer outside, you become like, uh, you know, uh, the, the lost son, you know, the lost son of God. And then you find no place to really to you know, to seek for the comfort. Sometimes you're facing the issues and then it's unexpected. So, to continue to remain church in the church and connect with the church, engage with the church is very important. And service also, you know, you know, just not, not only just come to the service of the uh, Sunday service, but also you need to involve in the ministry of the church. Whether your strength maybe just uh, maybe is with the community engagement, or some of you maybe with as a musician, or even just now, you know, we have the opening prayer by the sister here. So any any things you know, which is very important for you to involve. Involved is uh, because you are part of the family here. Unless you are part of the family, you won't involve here. You won't have the sense of belongingness. Can I say? Can you say a big amen? Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. And Peter and John had just come in from the battlefields. Wow, you say, Pastor, what do you mean battlefields? Because, you know, they were preaching the gospel and were put into the prison. Wow, do you think the Malaysia will have these kind of things happen when you are preaching the gospel and something happen? It won't happen unless you preach to the majority groups. Isn't it? Hallelujah. But... You know, the majority group, they haven't heard the gospel once even. Can they be deprived of even one time to hear the gospel? No. I'm not showing sure a very uh, so-called of the offensive message. This is a timely message to pray for this group of people. Can I hear a big amen on you? Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God. The young church is very aspirational, praise God, and also very inspirational. So, praise God, Peter and John had just come in from the battlefield because they are preaching the gospel to, you know, to the Jews. Those of the days, the Jews is really, you know, bring a lot of con uh, persecution to this group. And uh, the church met to pray in order to defeat enemy. So, uh, because they were put into the prison, the church began to join their hand and pray, continue to pray for Peter and John until they are released. Hallelujah. So you see, the early church is not the church in the, in the comfort zone. The early church is what, you know, is welcome the difficulties and even in the battlefields. 
Hallelujah, praise God. So this is totally different from Malaysia church. You know, believe me, you know, I have been serving here for more than 30 years already. A lot of the churches that always, you know, we consider that as we sing the songs that we are like to join the concert. <laughs> no, it's actually no, you know. We are welcoming the presence of God, continue the presence of God. And too often today, too often today, believers gather for prayer as though attending a concert or a party. And there is a little sense of the urgency and the danger because most of us are comfortable in our Christian walk. Okay, so prayer lesson number two. Okay, can we say it together? It was a united prayer meeting. So I, will, uh, I think Dr. Kwan is going to invite all of you all to come to the prayer meeting. You know, the prayer meeting just on, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's held in your clinic or anywhere. I don't know, just on, it's been here. Or, okay, so it, it's here in the church. So do make yourself available. Not just for, you know, for the solo, so-called religious activity. No, just engage with God and the get inspirational power of the Lord and continue your Christian work with Him. Hallelujah, praise God. So, as uh, this was a united prayer meeting, as they raised their voice together in Book of Acts chapter 4.24, and uh, the people were of one heart and one mind, and God was pleased to answer their request. You know, as people had one mind and one heart, God was pleased. God was pleased. Wow, you know, this pleased means that God actually resides in the presence of the unity. Praise God. The ambience of unity. So God was well pleased to answer your request. So that's why to come to the prayer meeting is so important because you will raise a voice together in one voice. Hallelujah. In unity. Praise God. I remember there was a wave of renew renewal in year 2000 when I was serving in East Coast. You know, do you know East Coast in Malaysia? Is uh, the, I was serving in the Kwantan, serving in Tringanu, on Kota Baru. You know, this is a place, majority actually is the Muslim. Okay. I was serving there, praise God. And then, you know, as I was uh, having a combined church camp for the three states, Bangkang, you, uh, and then, uh, you know, Kota Baru, and also Tringanu. We have three states come together. All churches are very small, but as we, you know, join together, we become a bigger church, isn't it? Hallelujah. So, as we join together, the three state churches come together. We think that, uh, you know, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a fantastic gathering. And, uh, you know, uh, before that, uh, there were never such kind, of the, uh, such kind of unity because uh, last time, because uh, as I served in the Kwantan, you need to drive the, the other, you know, uh, just about the, uh, I think, 200, 200 km. John came to, uh, to Dungun and then they go further down to Guachirunganu, the other one hour. Wow. And go to Golobaru, you know. And those of the days I was uh, I was driving a very old, old uh, Peugeot. <laughs> the one very old Peugeot. And uh, sometimes the wipers uh, suddenly stopped, you know. So how? <laughs> so you know, this is the old, old Peugeot. We never stop from, you know, to unite the churches together. I drive to different you know, stays to meet up with the church pastors one by one. And because of this, we encounter a great refreshing and revival along the East Coast where we had a combined camp. This combined church camp, you know, three states of all the, the you know, the, the I, I mean, this is the three states of the churches that will come together. In respect of any of the church background, we come together in unity and in one voice and then you know the church the church begin to experience a revival and refreshing you know in refreshment in such kind of manner so even you know in the time they even preach you know to the Malay in the general hospital and then you know those of the days the church uh, because uh, there were very few of the members in the uh, you, know, you know in three states of the church and what happened, what happened after the church came? You know, the Holy Spirit began to, you know, reign, not only just in the church camp, but even he inspired many of the, many of the, you know, of the Christians after, you know, they attend the church, 
uh, the, the, the combined church camp, and then they begin to experience the great anointing of God even after they return to their church. And then, you know, the, even the church begin to pack with the uh, people who come for prayer meeting. Those of days that, you know, pastor is the one to open the door <laughs> for, the, uh, for, the ch- for the church to pray meeting. But, you know, now it's totally different, you know. They queue in a long queue, you know, in a church waiting for the prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Do you expect such kind of revival to also happen to your church? Hallelujah. Then make yourself available, you know, to the prayer meeting. And then not only this, beyond that, you have to be united to come to help with the other churches. So not just your church. The revival will not just happen to one, to one church, but it will happen to the all churches who come together. Hallelujah. Sorry, I have to share with you. Hopefully this is not offensive to you. Praise God. Huh? Okay, so, uh, the, so so when three states churches were receiving the Toronto blessings in a combined church camp, there was more than 50 cars encountered the accidents before they reached the campsite. You know, when revival is going to, uh, it's going to happen, who will be well informed? Devil. <laughs> Devil is the one to know first, you know. He will try to, what he calls, to interrupt the, the revival. So that's why, you know, when the accident happened, not only just once, though, you know, all together, 15 cars. Wow. Can you say, wow? So this is the spiritual warfare. Uh, so revival, you know, always a follow the persecution. Follow the anything that the devil try to interrupt. Wow. So, so this is the, then uh, the prayer lesson number three. Okay, can we say it together? Their prayer was based uh, solidly on the word of God. So in this case, uh, some... Uh, you know, in Psalm chapter 2, the word of God and the prayer must always go together. The word of God and prayer must always go together. You know, for charismatic church, we know that uh, we, 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 we know that we treasure the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the anointing, the power of the Lord. But sometimes, uh, always we ignore is that we have to really study the word of God. So, praise God, you have the Bible study here. So, but... I think more than that, you have to attend the only seminary to sign up with them because you know, we have an in-depth of the training. Not only just uh, you know, the Word of God, theology degree, and also with your cross-cultural or missions, uh, different things it's going to share. It's going to enlarge our, uh, enlarge our uh, insight, actually, to continue to see that even more. Praise God. So 29 years ago, when I was serving in Kwantan GCC Church, it's, it's the LG Church, Assembly of God. You know. Okay, I was serving there in the Chinese department and I also was preaching in the English department in different places. Sometimes uh, in those of the days in Jukai, you know, we have to go there to preach. You know, sometimes I have to preach, uh, you know, I preach in English and to translate into Mandarin. Sometimes I even have to translate into Hokkien. <laughs> One person, you have to do three of the uh, translation. So this is uh, the way, you know, when I was... Uh, Come here, I was coming here, I was really trained by Malaysian. <laughs> How? Because I became, uh, become very linguistic, praise God. Okay, so uh, during the time that I was uh, uh, in Kwanda, we were having our three years of the training of International Shepherd School. And we, uh, the time actually laying a very strong foundation in the Word of God. And now, praise God, I come to, you know, the Donny Seminary and serve here, and we have even have the credited it means the APTA, Asia Pacific Theological Association, accredited Dolly Seminary. Hallelujah. We provide even the, the more of the in depth training. Praise God. And then the true prayer is not telling God what to do, but asking God to do His will in us and through us. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And then, you know, uh, it means getting God's will done on earth, not man's will done in heaven. You know, most awfully, now we are praying that God, my will will be done. But rather, your will be done on earth. So by praying to into what you have heard and prepare yourself to act as guided by the Lord. And 33 years ago, God told me, UK, there was a UK preacher called Trevor Yaxley. 
was a very injured in his car accident. You know, he was invited to come to my Taiwan church to preach. And, you know, uh, he would be preaching in my church, you know, one year later. And when I was in my morning, uh, morning devotion, as I pray, God bring me to just he see supernaturally. He was injured in his accident. And then the time, you know, we had no WhatsApp, we had no line, no other things, connections. The only thing is our prayer. So we have the super natural, uh, super, uh, supernatural of the connection with the Lord. And praise God. So one year later, when he came to my church, he started by, I was very injured in the car accident. I almost died. But because the one supernatural power come upon me, I guess this will be my prayer or some of the intercessor really intervene. Hallelujah. So, you know, prayer is so important. As you connect with the Lord, something supernatural is going to happen. Continue to, you know, not only just stay tuned, with this preaching, but also stay connected with God's supernatural power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it was converted half a year later when he fly to Taiwan. And we need to exercise a nice supernatural spiritual gifts as per 1 Corinthians 12. So never mind. I won't go through go through that. But we will provide all this kind of teaching in Dongling. Anyway, in your church, I believe. Dr. Kwan is going to, uh, to help you how to know the, the nice supernatural power as per in the 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, prayer lesson number four. Uh, can we say this together? They acknowledge the sovereignty of God. Uh, so they address God as a sovereign God, uh, the God who is in control of all things from personal, to family, to church, to workplace, to community, to nations. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. You know, you say that, oh, God is just too busy. No, God is not a busy body, you know, but He is really concerned about you. So something when you encounter, actually, whether it's in, with your family, with your personal, or even to your church, to the workplace, God is in control. God is speaking to you, continues to speak to you in a very personal manner. Hallelujah. You know, I was, uh, you know, a uh, mechanical engineer in Taiwan, the biggest company at the time. So, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was going to be sent to you. That just says, as the, you know, uh, as my company over there. But somehow I received a special calling from God. God called me, you know, to this, to this, uh, uh, I mean, to Malaysia. I thought, those of the days I thought, uh, Malaysia is, you know, always stay at the, <laughs> Stay at the top of the trees. <laughs> and because you see uh, too many of the videos about the Orang Asli. <laughs> but anyway, I come here, I see a lot of the bungalows. <laughs> okay. But somehow it's another bungalow who attracted me to here. It's because of the, uh, I think it's, it's because of the God's calling. Divine calling, speak to me. Otherwise, because my wife actually is a lecturer at university, we won't choose to come to here. But it's because the divine calling in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 2, when Barnabas and Paul were sent forth by the Holy Spirit, by the church, hallelujah, not only by church, by the Holy Spirit. So we are here, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, you know, one day, if the Lord gives you a very personal calling, do, do respond to that. Maybe you see that. Wow, this is too tough for me. I don't think this is the, my calling. Yes, you know, I'm not a good boy also at the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I have been struggling because I got very high pay in Taiwan. Okay, so uh, actually I run away from the calling like Jonah for three years. I'm not a good guy. <laughs> the time, you know, because I say I got a, I got a good pay. I say, I, you know, I bargain with the Lord. I say that. Uh, Lord, actually, I can, I can supply the needs, financially supply three, three pastors to go to the seminary, not me, <laughs> three pastors. And then Lord, you know, become quiet. He keep quiet, you know, for roughly about three years. Until three years later, I encountered a very serious uh, car accident, you know. I was up in, the, in the Taiwan, in the mountains, and if you drive the car, you know, come to the, you know, from, from the, 
bottom of the mountain to the top takes you about four hours time. And I encountered a very, uh, ex uh, a very serious uh, car accident. The time, you know, there is a uh, there's motorcyclist, you know, a man and a man and a girl actually on the motorbike, and uh, actually as I, I hit them, it's because what they're coming out from the tunnel without turning on the light. <laughs> I can't even see that, you know. Wow! So I just bang them you know, to the wall. So very serious. Uh, I'm driving the car, and all my disciples is with me. And I see that, and you know, they were bent into the, uh, bent into the tunnel. And I say, Lord, forgive me. I know what you are trying to talk to me, but now the most important thing, please save their life. Because you know, in driving from the top of the mountain to the bottom takes you about four hours time. And I pray that God, let no blood be shed. Let no anything happen to detriment her life. Wow. You know, as I pray, I kneel down and pray. My disciples kneel because I'm the, I'm the leader of the, my church. I kneel down and pray earnestly to God. Then the Lord begins to speak to you. What about your calling? <laughs> it's not because of the accident and, you know, the Lord caused me to answer the prayer. I, I think be, not because of that, because I am the disobedience of Jonah. I tried to run away. But anyway, as I way back, you know, to all the 30, 30 years here, truly, you know, I become blessings of many of churches. Uh, it, I am not proud of that, actually. I plant many churches. As I way back, how great you are, Lord. You don't even, you know, you don't even forsake me when I have some of the, these are the challenges so praise God, you know, God is faithful, always. Hallelujah. So, uh, so the, the Peter and John, they address God, and early church address God as the sovereign Lord, the God who is in control of all things, from personal to family, to church, to workplace, to community, to nations. In fact, the Greek word Lord is called despotes, which gives us our English meaning Lord and Master. One who exercises a complete jurisdiction. Wow. You see, if your father is Lord of heaven and earth, what have you to fear? Faith in the so sovereign Lord is a tremendous encouragement for God's people to keep serving the Lord when the going is difficult. When your going is difficult. So dear brethren, let's come to the Lord. Yeah. You may encounter some of the difficulties. It may happen, occur in workplace, in families. Sometimes, and you know, we may encounter something unexpected. Like I recently, actually, I encountered a very serious car accident. Later, I'm going to share with you. Okay, so prayer lesson number five. They did not pray to have their circumstances changed or their enemies be put out of office. <laughs> yeah, you see. This, sometimes you know, we are praying that now, we can't even just say that, Lord, you protect me by coming in and going out. Yes, always we pray that. But sometimes you will be very, the facing of the challenges of when you have something very difficult. So how do you deal with that? How do you face that? Rather, they ask God to empower them to make the best use of their circumstances and to accomplish what he has already determined. Wow. You see that now? They ask God to empower them to make the best use of their circumstances. This is what the early church has been praying. Wow. So, so this was not the fatalism, but it's faith in the Lord of history who has a perfect plan and is always victorious. Can we say a big amen? Hallelujah. They ask God, the early church, they ask for divine enablement, not escape. Wow, can we say it together? They ask for divine enablement, not escape. And God gave them the power that they needed. What you need is God's power, God's presence, God's anointings to accomplish His will, rather than to accomplish our will. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Philip Brooks wrote, he's a very famous of the theologian, he said, do not pray for easy lives. 
pray to be stronger men and women. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your task. Can yeah, I hear? Amen? See what I mean? Okay. So they see like Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Apostle Paul, and they are all the same. They pray for powers equal to your task. Now sometimes in the church we we'll try to escape, you know, uh, some of the, the uh, I mean, some of the ministries. Uh, we, we, I, you say, I don't think I fit for this one. Uh, I don't think for that one. I don't think that one. End up, you know, I only fit for coming here to eat. <laughs> we ask God to forgive us, you know. So we will be, if you are really abide by the law of the Lord, continue to follow his footsteps, you'll be like Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Apostle Paul. You'll continue to pray for powers equal to your task. That is the way the early Christians pray, and that is the way God's people should pray today. Can we say amen? The early church depend on God. The Christians of the early church knew how to pray in accordance to God's will so that God's hand could work in mighty power. Wow. They pray that God's mighty hand should continue to palm upon them without any of opposition, without any of the challenges. How did the Lord come and empower you? Praise God. The prayer is not an escape from responsibility. Pray, it is, actually, it is our response to God's ability. So I said again, prayer is not an escape from responsibility. It is our response to God's ability. So more prayer, you will experience God's ability. Hallelujah. And this prayer energizes us for service and battle. Will you face a battle? Yes. Sometimes, you know, as we journey with the Lord, something unexpected is going to happen. It is a spiritual warfare also. Okay? So I planted one more church in Kota Sara in KL. So after I left the East Coast, there was a time when devil attempted to intimidate my church leaders through the three-car accident. Again, you see, they want to intimidate my church leaders. Three of my major leaders there, they encountered a car accident. But I felt the devil was jeering at us However, we pre, uh, actually we prevail against the demonic attack through prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer is this important? Yes, exactly. Wow, praise God. And then, uh, number two, where I can share with you, we declare God's greatness. Can we say it together? We declare God's greatness. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness and stretch your hand to heal and to perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Hallelujah. So they, the early church, continue to pray that you enable us to speak your word with boldness in respect to any of the things that you may encounter. You know, I was serving in China for 30 years uh, I was leading the mission team to there for 30 years. Uh, you know, China now, even a, a lot of churches were closed down. Why? It's because what, you know? It's because uh, now currently the, the China's, uh, you know, chairman, uh, Xi Jinping, you know, not happy with the church also. They even persecute even the, the other religion. They will persecute even the, you know, the Wurgen. Wurgen, you know, you know is, is, a, is a Muslim. They persecute all the religion because the, the, China Communist Party actually is an atheist. So they come against all the religions. But even though with this kind of the challenges, you know, I was there starting from 1991, and uh, I was, uh, you know, serving in different part of almost the different part of China, and then even to the, the farthest part in Xinjiang province, you know, and the northwest part, you know, which is the Muslim, you know, dominated places. I was serving in different places. But praise God, you know, it's, it's really enrich and enhance my mission, uh, uh, what I call it, the mission of the experiences. So that's why now got a lot of the China people, they sign up with our donor seminary. Now, I think this has really paved the way. Huh? So praise God, during the time, 
I even go to many provinces pray. I pray that even the dead will be open, you know, ear of the dead will be open. I pray that the lamb can walk, and many signs and wonders begin to happen. It's because of what? Because of prayer. Then one time I, as I was uh, giving the uh, prophetic prayer to uh, roughly around the, you know, to, uh, to hundreds of major leaders, uh, top leaders. I pray for them, you know, up to one year later, they come back to me and say, they say that, Pastor Paul, thank you for your prayer. All the prayers all come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not glory to me, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I'm serving a faithful and living God. Hallelujah. Like you. Hallelujah. You're the same. You're serving the great and living God. Pray together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, pray lesson number six. They did not ask for protection. They asked for power. This is what the early church was praying, you know. They did not ask for fire from heaven to destroy the enemy like Elijah, you know. Okay, they, they, uh, they prayed for power from heaven to preach the word and heal the sick. Wow. Same here. Likewise, now we have to pray to preach the word and to heal the sick. And many of signs of wonder is going to follow as you preach the word of God. Like the same just now I was sharing, you know, in, in the Muslim the dominated place in the <coughs> Kolabadu, the place, you know, uh, as our people, the after we are empowered by the Holy Spirit in the three days of the, the camp, combined church camp. And then, you know, the science wonder because it happened not only to the preacher, but also to each and every campus. Hallelujah. So campus received the anointing. As they go out to the general hospital, they lay hand upon the sick. You know, the sick was healed. Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand? <laughs> this is the ordinary lay people. Do you understand lay people? Yes, we are lay people. <laughs> okay. But we are serving a great God whose power of healing is for us. As we begin to follow like the uh, uh, book of Mark chapter 16, as the disciples begin to spread and preach the gospel, signs and wonders followed. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders will follow. Now you follow signs and wonders. Signs and wonders will follow you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, and the, the word says, uh, straight out, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your Jesus. So the power lies in the name of Jesus. The power is for the glory of Jesus alone. Amen. Hallelujah. The disciples were praying to continue the ministry of Jesus in preaching, repentance, and asking for the message they were sharing to have proof of validity. validity. So how can you catch tiger's cup if you don't enter the tiger's den? Hallelujah. So don't be afraid of the, any of the challenges or even tough situations because this is time we can catch the tiger cubs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I was having the 30 years of the mission in China and signs and wonders follow. It's all because of that. They, because really abide by the word of God. And everywhere I go there, I see that signs and wonders happen. Whether it's in Malaysia, whether it's in China, in different places. Because what? Because God is the great God. Hallelujah. A great God that we continue to serve to Him. Okay, so number three, part three, we experience a God's great power. Can we say it together? We experience God's great power. So, so, so number seven lessons. This is the last lessons we, uh, we can learn from here. They wanted to glorify God's child, Jesus Christ. So everything we do is not to glorify ourselves, to glorify God child jesus christ it was jesus name that gave them power to minister to the world and to perform miracles in his name alone deserve the glory the glory of god not the needs of men is the highest purpose of answer prayer you see what i mean okay nobody say god, god i got this need i got that needs uh, please and uh, you know uh, just uh, you know uh, meet my desire all the things actually the most important thing the glory of god not the needs of men. But anyway, you are not ignored by the Lord. But most important thing is that, well, your challenges, well, your situation, well, your, any of the way you are doing, bring the glory to the Lord. This is the most important thing. Even though we will say that, wow, God, you know, I got this needs, please help me. You know, when you are in the early of the 
Christian walk with the Lord, yes, God actually helped me. You know, uh, during the time I was in Taiwan, in a college, you know, I suffered insomnia for four years. I almost depressed already at the time. But because I attend the church, then my insomnia was healed. Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand? So I experienced the need of the gracious hand of God to give me the healing. But after you know, a period of time, you know, God wants to test my faith. Our faith needs to go through the trials and temptations, challenges. Otherwise, how do we prove you are really a Christian? You are really rooted and watered in the Word of God. Amen? So God will test us in the furnace. <laughs> So you be you know, like Jesus was saying, you know, I got one more baptism that you receive. Why? You know, the baptism of the fire. <laughs> what do you mean, baptism of the fire? It's when you, the, the Lord is put you into the furnace to burn you, but you will never be burned out. Hallelujah. You will never be burned out by the grace of God. But God grants us, He is going to sustain us. And you will become an even stronger person in the faith. Hallelujah. So the glory of God, the glory of God and not the needs of man is the highest purpose of answer prayer. Uh, you know, as I was uh, the preach, uh, as I was a camp speaker for the FGB, you know, FGB uh, business means a fellowship you know, for three days, I was a camp speaker there. I, I observed that the one committee is not is not uh, you know is not present in the in the place. I so begin to ask them why this so called brother this brother so and so is not present. And they begin to tell me that this brother become now actually don't want to uh, trust in Jesus already because he said his prayer is the answer. His prayer is the answer. I say how come got so small faith. You know, what our faith should be like a growing faith. Growing faith about very small to medium size, to even greater faith, to a higher level. Are your faith growing accordingly? Wow. The faith has to be, be rooted in the Word of God. So, and then also as we preach, as, oh, sorry, as we pray, we begin to see that God begins to answer our prayer in different ways. You know, the answer of God's prayer will be three things only. Firstly, yes. <laughs> Secondly, no. Thirdly, wait. <laughs> so most of the time, you know, as you have been Christian for many years already, do you think yes is very fast to come? Or no? Maybe no. Wait. Carry it out. Many a time, God will ask you and give you a task whether you can wait or not. Sometimes we are too rushed to make a decision without any waiting upon the Lord. So we could encounter many of the issues. Okay, so as you know, you know, in Malaysia, some of them actually encounter the scam. Have you anyone, any one of you encountered a scam before? <laughs> you know, as I, uh, you know, I search and say that in Malaysia, uh, you know, every year got more than every year got more than eight thousand six hundred eight thousand six hundred of the scammer. So you're luckily you're not you not get into scam. <laughs> but you know, scam got many of the tricks. They can you know just uh, you know through the Facebook. Uh, uh, sometimes they will target at those who are you know in the older age one, they said, because you are maybe, uh, you know, you are financially quite strong, huh? because after so many years of work, so they will target at you. So I just give you some uh, <laughs> a gentle reminder, have to be very careful about the scam. But those who believe in Jesus Christ, we also will be tested in many aspects, okay? So, you know, so this, this particular brother, FGD, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, full gospel piece means a fellowship. Now, he become weak because what? Because he said his prayer is not answered. So I, I was kidding that the oh, how come the faith is so uh, so small? He's not growing, you know. 
He has been serving for 10 years already. How come he cannot wait? Well, so most likely, you know, the Christian currently, we have no patience to wait upon the leading and guidance of the Lord. Uh, so after they pray, the place where, where they were meeting the, were shaken. The whole place was shaken. They all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So God's answer was to shake the place. Wow. So Malaysia have no earthquake here. But, but Taiwan got a lot of earthquakes. <laughs> uh, God also, uh, in Rana or Sapa, yeah, I know, Rana, but not here. Ma. Uh, not here. Ma. Okay. So can you believe that there, is a, there will be a shaking? I mean, the, the spiritual shaking. Spiritual shaking means that, you know, sometimes, you know, the church will encounter some of the you know, issues, uh, and then the God is shaking the church because at the end times, uh, God wants to really, you know, to differentiate the real Christian and the, and the so called the new world Christians. So continue to remain in the church to connect with the Lord. Hallelujah. Receive the power from on high. God's answer is to shake the place. I pray that God will shake this place also. <laughs> I pray that, you know, your life will be shaken also. When you are shaken, you know, you will be differentiated from the so-called Christian because as you are shaken, your faith will be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Have you experienced the shaking of God? I don't know about your answer, but you have to ask yourself. Oh, this was not a second petty cost. Oh, it was a new feeling of the Spirit to equip the believers to serve the Lord and minister to the people. So are you expecting for the second Pentecost? The first Pentecost has already happened in early church in the early days. Now are you expecting the second Pentecost? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Lord to send forth a missionary to different places, I was a uh, you know, minister here for 30 years. I prayerfully, I pray for Malaysia, even to send the missionary to Taiwan, <laughs> sent to many places. Uh, but maybe you will say, this is my, my, my cup of tea. <laughs> but you know, this is a great commission. Hallelujah. Great commission, not only just a minister to the with so-called doorstep mission. Mission at the doorstep. Mission with the doorstep is what you know. Because you could minister to Orangery, minister to Indians, and minister to you know to the different uh, you know races here, which is good. But what about the Malaysia to send a missionary like Taiwan sent missionary me to here? What about you send missionary to different places? Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Wow, I don't see any smile on your face. It seems we are very struggle. <laughs> okay, he said, man up my cup of tea. <laughs> okay, anyway, I pray that there will be a second Pentecost to happen in Malaysia. Hallelujah. And you need to, you know, stay connected with the Lord. To pray in the Holy Holies like Susanna. You may not have the, like 19 children like her, but you may have the your holy holies in your room. Malaysia's homes are so big, we've got so many rooms. Any rooms can be your holy holies. Can you just set apart one room to be your holy holies? Hallelujah. Now we spend too much time, you know, in just, you know, seeing the videos and all things like that, you know, but we don't really spend time to pray. And without the prayer, how to bring in the revival to Malaysia? So the early church prayed, and God answered in mighty power. Prayer was the lifeline of Jerusalem church. What is your lifeline? Your family, your work, your money, <laughs> etc. Okay, so prayer is the lifeline of Jerusalem church. Can you just honestly ask yourself, pray to the Lord, what is my lifeline? So the greatest concentration of power in Jerusalem that day was in the prayer meeting that followed the trial. I say it again, follow the trial. So only the trial to really test out whether we are the goat or we are the hay. <laughs> it's very different. You know. This is one of the two 
truly great prayers recorded in the Bible. And it is a good example for us to follow. So they gave them the boldness that they needed to continue to serve God. Sometimes we need the boldness to continue to serve God. So, you know, if one day Malaysia, uh, the other majority groups comes outnumber, <laughs> outnumber of the Chinese, the Indians, and all, you know, Indians now become the majority percentage is lesser, lesser already, you see how? Okay, so we need to give, more, give birth and more of children. <laughs> You, know, you say the majority group, normally they will have six to eight children. And very soon, they are going to outnumber the population of the other groups. I mean, the, the, the other races. Sometimes we only just consider financially there. Without knowing that, we will be put into the crossroad. If one day, the church will under persecution, because of, you know, some of the hoodoo or even Sharia we put in place. How? It seems that, you know, I'm well informed about this. <laughs> and then uh, most of the Christians, you know, purposely just ignore the things. I never, uh, I just focus on my life, I do my job only, you know, without really look into the, the future development. So these are the things that really have to pray. And really have to pray. So the name of Jesus Christ has not lost its power. Many of God's people have lost their power because we have stopped praying to the sovereign Lord. So nothing lies be, uh, beyond the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. Can we say amen? <laughs> okay, the early church cooperated with the Holy Spirit's counsel and guidance. They prayed, and God answered in mighty power. Twenty years later, I went to Henan, China, for a short-term mission, and the whole village was uh, surrounded by the police. We prayed, and the river began to flood, and the police dared not to come across the river to arrest us. Hallelujah. It's all because of prayer. You know, the, the, during the time, the, all the, you know, the China's of the, normally the church is, is a, just an underground church. Uh, but, you know, when the whole team of them, this could be more than one million. One million. So that day, actually, it's more than 1,000 of the top leaders come here. As we begin to kneel down, begin to pray, and you see that the, God just pushed back the power of darkness. Hallelujah. And then, you know, they dare not to come across here to arrest us. But after three or four days later, you know, they give up on us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand? Hallelujah. Praise God. Finally, I want to share my testimony with you. You know, this was a life claiming accident for me and my wife, Cindy, when I encountered as we were in the seat on uh, Presidentially in the spiritually warfare out in the palace of Agong. I was praying for the new Agong because he is going to be uh, sworn in, in the, as the, the new Agong. So we're praying there. We went and, uh, you know, we prayed there. We, normally we we'll pass by there, pray for just, a, you know, for 15 minutes. This is the first time I pray for more than one hour together with my wife. Then, you know, then we come to the evening time as I want to drive the car, you know, from the Kodanaman Sala side, go further, you know, go back to my place, which is called the Shah Alam. I stay there, which is a Muslim dominated place is there. You know, there are more than 80% or, or sorry, 90, 90, uh, 95% of the is the Muslim over there. You know. So I was uh, you know going into uh, because I was so happy the time, meet up with my students, and then after that, we pray for the you know a new sword in of the uh, Agong, and we are so excited. But somehow, you know, just in the midnight, in the midnight, roughly around twelve o'clock, I encountered this accident, and this accident happened is so you know uh, beyond my control, and then you know this is so critical. So I call this a light claiming accident, you know. And what happened is that because of, well, my car, which I drive further, and uh, because of this, uh, uh, 
a Muslim guy. Actually, they drive the car, suddenly to take a U-turn, actually it's the wrong way. They cannot do that. So I, begin, I go further up, and then I bang with him, and then the whole car was turned 90 degrees to, 90 degree, 90 degree to this direction, and almost hit the other car driven by one Muslim family. But somehow as I come out from the cars, the car even you know, almost will be burned, and, you know, but you know, I quickly come out from there. And then uh, this Muslim uh, lady and her daughter begin to tell me that she, Mr. Huang, actually, uh, they call it Mr. Huang, Paul Huang, actually, uh, I see that uh, the car actually is offended, actually it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a there at the fault. So I'm no problem. So they say that I'm willing to become your witness. You know, as we go to the police station to have the police report, it's around 3 a.m. in the morning. They are willing to come. Wow. And then, you know, I'm so grateful because, you know, I got, a, you know, all the recording of the accident, what happened, you know, in my car, got all the things. But the sergeant in the police station, they don't want me and my, uh, you know, my church elder to go in to have a look. They say, you cannot come in to have a look. I say, we, we should see. We have to waste all the things. And after that, they don't allow us to go in. And then what happened? Uh, after that, they, they told us that, uh, you know, your uh, the previous, all the recording is there, but not this one. I said, it cannot be possible. <laughs> but they don't want to allow, allow us to see. It's, they just uh, take away all the things. So how could I face this kind of thing? I could be, you know, at the, at the, at the fourth side. So how? It, because of this, a Muslim lady and a daughter come in to become my witness in the three o'clock. Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand? <laughs> God saved my life. I don't even share the blood. It, it, I don't even have the one bone fractured. Hallelujah. We are serving a great and living God. Not only me, but you are also. Praise God. You know, Cindy and me, we are praying earnestly for the new Johor Sudan to be sworn in as the uh, going in the end of the December last year. This is what happened, no? And then, as we were in the bigger hospital, we are doing the checking. We want to really find out whether got any of things that happened to us. Uh, we do the, actually a lot of the check, the city scan, uh, all the things. And then, they, after that, even the specialists that tell us that, wow, Mr. Mr. Huang, congratulations, nothing happened to you. I said, because I'm serving a great God. Hallelujah. He's an Indian, you know. <laughs> He's not a Christian. Hallelujah. So praise God, you know, my wife and myself, we stayed there in the hospital to do the thorough check, check up, you know, for just one day. So. But, you know, before we leave the ward, I begin to share the gospel with the auntie go in the same room. It's, she's English educated. And then before we leave, the needle, we minister to her, get her safe. Hallelujah. So you see, never, never deprive a person of one time hear the gospel. Amen. So praise God. So you see, this is the, the uh, Muslim lady who come here as an arrow, you know, on the top of her head. The Muslim mother and the daughter came and become our witness of our car accident. We present to them a Christmas gift as a token of appreciation and share with, uh, with them the gospel uh, to them, sharing how great our God is. And then, you know, it happened because, uh, you know, this is my church leader in, uh, in charge of the pastorate. Okay? And then her daughter actually is in the same company, the same bank. And this uh, uh, Muslim lady actually was uh, acting as like uh, the job is like a uh, uh, customer service. And my church leader's daughter is the manager of the bank, of the bank. So I asked him to continue to follow up on her because uh, she was in the customer service. Can we just give God a big hand? Nothing happened coincidentally, you know. Even though the bad things will become the good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God worth everything for good for those who really love Him. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us take heart and take heed of the seven lessons we learned today. Firstly, can we say it together? We, it was a prayer that was born out of witness and service for the Lord. Secondly, it was a united prayer meeting as they raised their voice together. Thirdly, their prayer was based solidly on the word of God. Fourthly, they acknowledged the sovereignty of God, the God who is in control of everything. Fifthly, they asked God to empower them to make the best use of their circumstances and not to accomplish what he has already determined. And number six, they did not ask for protection. They asked for, say it again, power, power, power. They did not ask for protection. Power is the most important thing. As the presence of God is there, nothing will stop God from blessing you. Hallelujah. And to make you to become a blessing of God. And number seven, they wanted to glorify Jesus Christ. All the way, all the while, bear in mind, glorify Jesus Christ in any ways. Maybe you are preaching the gospel to some people. Sometimes, and you know, even though I, I was a, uh, pray the bad thing that I preach, you know, and I, preach, I share the gospel, share the gospel with the, the people. When I play the volleyball, I share the gospel with them. You know, never, never deprive the person of one seed in their time, lifetime to hear the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we just uh, rise our feet? As we stand, can we ask the, uh, the music team to come and the uh, uh, Yeah, maybe you can play the songs.